Welcome to another short edition of the Worst Fantasy Show. We are checking in on Best Ball Summer because Underdog just dropped their number one competition, Best Ball Mania 5. And so I have five tips for you if you're drafting Best Ball Mania 5 this early in the season. And hey, I know short uh, attention spans are short these days, but if you guys stick through this little video, I will have a bonus tip and a short announcement for you at the end. So hang with me here. Number one. <sighs> the rookie hotness has taken over. Marvin Harrison Jr. in round one is going ahead of Puka and AJ Brown in the latest uh, best ball draft that I had just done. Uh, sponsored by Fantasy Football Advice Network. You can see that one on my social media on Twitter. Uh, Malik Neighbors, the other rookie wide receiver that is getting a lot of love, is going in the 210. He doesn't even have a fucking quarterback. Hey, I'm still on the team over here. Tommy DeVito. Uh, could just as well and easily be the starting quarterback at some point for the New York Giants because it's Daniel Jones and not much else. Uh, I really thought they needed to hit a uh, quarterback in the draft. They did not. Uh, but yeah, these two rookies right now are hotter than Sidney Sweeney. Like they're all over the timeline and they are all up in those high ADPs. And to be frank, I'm avoiding them, especially Malik Neighbors. Like I said, looks like a Lambo. Uh, outside of a hut right now on the New York Giants squad. I think he could struggle to get to 1,000 yards. And Marvin Harrison Jr., like, I love him, but to equal Puka or A.J. Brown at this point, like, you're basically saying he is 100% guaranteed going to have 12 to 1,500 yards his rookie season, which would be a pretty magical rookie season for a wide receiver. And, yes, he has an amazing opportunity and landing spot with the Cardinals, so I get it. Still a little rich for my blood. Number two, though. Death by second round. The second round going into the third right now. That's right, it sucks. I mean, you talk about there's a run of like Wilson. Drake London, Kyron Williams, Chris Olave, Malik Neighbors, Stephon Diggs, Jalen Waddell, DJ Moore, Nico fucking Collins. What are we doing here? Zay Flowers? The only flowers you're going to be having is at the funeral for your fantasy team if you'd be drafting these guys high second, third round. So, uh, you know, really make sure that you know exactly who you want in that second or third round. Take a peek at some of the running backs going in that same range and see if there's not a way for you to pivot. Hell, you could even consider trading. Uh, I know I was just in a startup dynasty draft that kind of went off the rails, uh, but uh, I had traded up back into the first round so that I didn't even have a second round pick. I basically went one, one, three. Uh, so if you have, you know, that kind of possibility, this would be a good year to do that because I honestly am fine missing that second round because a lot of these guys just have huge question marks to me. Now you get the next one, baby, and we're back. Not that we went anywhere. Not that we went anywhere. Number three, my favorite quarterback tight end stack is back, baby. We are back in on Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I know last year was disappointing. And good, because that's where you're getting the value now. Uh, Kelsey, in the draft that I did, and again, this is, I'm basing a lot of this off the Best Ball Mania 5 draft that I just did uh, with uh, Fantasy Football Advice Network. Shout out to them. Uh, but yeah, Mahomes, Kelsey. Kelsey went at 3-9, and the same guy got Mahomes at 5-9, making a nice little stack of Kelsey Mahomes in the late third, fifth round. That's huge value. If they rebound even in a modicum of fashion to what they were doing the years prior, then that's a massive value gained in the later rounds. Like when you were having to pay a 106 for Travis Kelsey and potentially a 206 for Patrick Mahomes, you were losing those first two round picks and it wasn't a, an advantage. When you're talking about now, you got two 
studly, you know, whether it's a wide receiver running back or two wide receivers, two whatever you did, you got two studly skill players, assuming in your first two rounds, you were able to come back and get Mahomes, uh, Kelsey. Even if, uh, you know, you were at that 312, for example, and Kelsey manages to slip to 312, I would be perfectly happy double tapping and taking Mahomes Kelsey right there because obviously I don't think, you know, I wouldn't think that Mahomes would make it all the way back to me then at 512, but I would be fine, you know, again, doing a 312 4 1 double tap for Kelsey Mahomes. So, again, I'm going to be very in on Kelsey Mahomes stacks this year. I do not think that Travis Kelsey falls off so much that he doesn't finish as a top three tight end. And you're finally, again, getting the discount on drafting Travis Kelsey, where if he were to finish as the tight end one, again, so far ahead of the rest of the pack, then you you got that huge positional advantage at the discounted ADP that it once was in the past. Speaking of tight ends, though, number four, the tight end cliff is real. My God, David Njoku is the tight end cliff. This man is out here fighting Gotham, and if you do not take David Njoku, you are going to be fighting for your life in these tight end fantasy streets because I'm looking at the guys going after Njoku, who is at the 9-6, so in that ninth round. Uh, if you want to take the shot, and this is again, I'm talking about your primary tight end. So I'm not talking about, you know, your backups, your guys that you're going to take a shot on as your second or third tight end, your your Ben Sinats, your Jatavian Sanders that are going to go later. I'm talking about this is your main tight end. You are my number one guy. Your number one guy. And uh, you're talking about Dallas Mitter, who has never really uh, done anything in his career. I think his career high is 800 yards and six touchdowns. TJ Hawkinson coming off a really intense injury, plus combined with the fact he's going to have a rookie uh, quarterback in J.J. McCarthy. You got Dalton Schultz, who now has Cade Stover in town. You got Pat Fryermuth, who now has Darthur Smith in town. You have Cole Komet, uh, who has three wide receivers ahead of him. So it's like... Basically, to me, David Njoku represents the last, you know, primary tight end one that you can grab in your drafts. And then after that is just going to be a crapshoot of guys that, yeah, maybe you like a guy or, or two, but I'm really making sure I'm coming out of those first nine rounds with at least one primary tight end. And again, David Njoku represents that last tier break before tight end death. And number five, to wrap it up, I'm waiting on QB this year, guys. Uh, you know, except for what I was saying earlier, if you have an opportunity to get that Kelsey Mahomes stack. But me personally, I'm just, I'm out on the QBs this year. And the reason is because it's such a deep position all of a sudden. And I'm looking at the disparity of the points that your top guys are getting. So you look at a Josh Allen, for example, who has historically been the number one quarterback to own in best ball because he's crushed 400 points, 400 points, 400 points, you know, 410, 412, 417 the last three years in terms of your his best ball actual points accrued, which was so much further ahead of the guy in second. You know, Dak Prescott uh, had 350, Jalen Hurts had 370, 380. So I can understand how when you talk about the difference between a Josh Allen and a Tua, a, a Trevor Lawrence, where now you're talking about almost a hundred point disparity. Yeah. There's a huge advantage, but now if Josh Allen were to come down a little bit, so let's just say, you know, because he's losing his number one wide receiver and it's being replaced by Keon Coleman. And we'll see how this offense now works in a more run based offense for an entire year. And given the pieces that they have, if Josh Allen regresses to, let's just say, the Jalen Hurts range of that 370 and 380 points, well, now it's not such a disparity between Jalen Hurts and, for example, Dak Prescott, who had 350, Jordan Love, who had 330. But the difference in the ADP in the rounds 
of where you are drafting those players means that now the disparity between the wide receiver or running back that you would have taken instead of that early quarterback is much greater compared to the guy that you end up taking if you take that early quarterback. So for example, you know, you take, instead of taking Josh Allen in the third, you take a wide receiver that scores 200 points. Well now, you know, much later in like the eighth, ninth round, maybe you get a guy that is within 50 points. But if you get a guy that produces only like 100, 125 points on the year, let's just say for the sake of argument and example, well, now that disparity of 75 to 100 points, that's much larger than the disparity, obviously, between Josh Allen if he doesn't finish so far ahead as the number one that he creates that positional advantage. So basically, you can make up the point difference between a Dak Prescott at 350 and a Jalen Hurts or a Josh Allen should they finish at 370, 380. You can make that up much easier by simply having taken Dak many rounds later. You know, a guy like Jordan Love or Jared Goff, perennially undervalued, you can take them later in the drafts. And again, the incremental value that you gain at those skill level positions of not having taken the quarterbacks early, suddenly that's where the math checks out of, oh, okay, I'm actually like adding more points overall to my team. And that's pretty much the goal when it comes to best ball. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for Johnny? Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for these little 10 minutes. I did say if you made it through this far, I'd give you an extra tip. So the extra tip is this. Slow drafts are better than fast drafts. And usually I am not the guy to say that I'm very impatient. I really hate uh, doing, honestly, like uh, the slow draft dynasty startups. Like I don't mind them, but I prefer a fast draft for a dynasty startup or a redraft for basically everything except best ball on underdog. I kind of love just throwing five, 10 slow drafts on, on up in the queue. And just, you know, you get to kind of build those teams accumulatively. And so I do really enjoy the slow draft process and feature on underdog. So you can basically do 30 second pick draft or eight hour pick draft. I've done a lot of the, I've done a lot of both, but I have started to find that I think I actively prefer just, you know, getting five to 10 um, of the slow drafts going, especially in these uh, tournaments, you know, for example, the contest right now, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's a $3 contest right now. Uh, and, you know, it's 20 max entries. So if you're going to just, you know, do 20 entries, do them all in slow drafts. And you can just accumulatively build those teams. You don't have to feel pressure and you don't have to, you know, rely on auto draft i know there are some players out there that will just you know set up 20, they'll just enter 20 drafts and let auto draft take care of it and hope for the best i could never i just don't live that way uh but that's where it's you know if i have my 20 cumulative slow drafts then i can still uh tinker and design the teams very much the way i want them uh, but again without the pressure of a fast clock or feeling like i've gotta always be making a pick Oh, Get off of me. Hey, just easing the tension, baby. Just easing the tension. Well, ease it on someone else. I've got uh, one show coming up this Monday. Uh, I'll be drafting on the show a Best Ball Mania 5 draft. So make sure you guys subscribe and follow for that. Um, that's going to be huge because last year I only did a couple of entries and the one that I drafted on the show was a qualifier. It did make it through. And hell, we even won a t-shirt from Underdog because uh, we had drafted all 49ers on that team which is basically how we ended up being a qualifier. Uh, we had uh, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, and I believe it was uh, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, and then we had some, uh, obviously some other great pieces that, you know, the whole roster ended up being pretty good. Like I mentioned, out of only two Best Ball Mania 5 drafts last year, that one was a qualifier. So make sure you guys join me on Monday. We'll have another uh, great interview show coming on Wednesday. We got a bunch of great stuff coming down the pipe. So again, this, this is totally fan-driven, guys. I don't do sponsorships. I don't do ads. This is a hobby for me. I don't want to have to do any of that stuff. So if you guys want to help grow the show organically, if you guys uh, you know want to keep it going with me 
All you got to do is super kick that subscribe, follow, share around, and comments. More importantly than anything, you know, just engage uh, a little bit with some comments. If you guys have questions for the show, if you guys have ideas for the show, shit you want to see on the show, whatever, whatever, keep it clever. Send it to me at, uh, at Jack Lewis now on all my socials or worst sports channel at gmail.com. And until the next time, I'll catch all of you guys on the flip side.